Welcome to a new episode of my high performance Java persistence video course. In this episode, we're going to talk about mapping the one to one table relationship when using JPA and Hibernate. First, we will discuss the unidirectional one to one JPA mapping and why you should be using the maps ID annotation as well. Second, we will talk about the bidirectional one to one JPA mapping and see why it can lead to the n plus one query problem. In the end, we will see how to use bytecode enhancement to work around the n plus one query problem affecting the parent side of a bidirectional one to one association. A unidirectional one to one JPA entity relationship looks as follows. The post details entity has a post property which references the parent post entity. Just like the many to one JPA relationship, by default, the one to one JPA association expects a foreign key column whose name is formed by joining the one to one property name with the entity identifier via an underscore character. If the foreign key column is different than the implicit one, you need to specify it via the join column annotation. In our case, the join column annotation is redundant since the post ID foreign key column is expected to be found in the post details table. The problem with this mapping is that the primary key and the foreign key columns are separated. That means we need an index for the primary key and another one for the foreign key. So a better mapping would be if we could use a single column, which is both the primary key of the child table and the foreign key to the parent table primary key. Therefore, in order to use a single column instead of two, we need to use the maps ID JPA annotation. This is actually how a typical one to one table relationship should look like, since a parent table record and its associated child table row should share the same primary key value. So in this case, the primary key column of the post details table has a foreign key relationship with the post table primary key. The benefit of sharing the primary key is not just we have a single column with a single index instead of two, but the association is more convenient from a data access logic perspective as well. For instance, if the primary key is shared, we can easily fetch the post details entity when knowing its parent post entity. So even if this is still a unidirectional one to one JPA mapping, and we can only navigate the association from the child side to the parent side, we can also fetch the child entity from the currently running persistence context when we have a post entity reference, as you can see in the following code snippet. Besides the one to one annotation mapping on a child side, the bidirectional one to one JP association requires also a one to one annotation with the mapped by attribute on the parent side. The mapped by attribute defines the child side property, which owns the bidirectional association. Just like for any bidirectional JPA relationship, it is good practice for the parent entity to define utility methods that synchronize both sides of the bidirectional association. In this case, the setDetails method takes care of both the details property of the parent post entity as well as the post property of the child post details entity. Now, assuming we define the fetch strategy to lazy on the parent side, and we try to find the post entity, Hibernate is going to execute two SQL select queries. The first one is for the post entity, while the second one is for the post details child entity. So even if we specified the fetch attribute of the one to one annotation as fetch type lazy, Hibernate still fetches the associated post details child entity when we load the parent post entity. This is because unlike the parent side one to many relationship where Hibernate can simply assign a collection proxy, even if there is no child record, the one to one relationship must decide if to assign the child reference to null or to an object, be it an actual entity or a lazy load proxy. This is an issue that affects only the parent side of a bidirectional one to one JPA association. On the other hand, the child side, which maps the associated foreign key column, knows whether the parent reference is either null or not by simply inspecting the foreign key column value. Therefore, the child side will assign a proxy only if the value of the foreign key column is not null. Otherwise, the one-to-one -one JPA association to the parent entity will be set to null. 
Now, to visualize why fetching the child association eagerly can affect performance, consider that we have three post entities, each one with its own post details, child entity. Let's try to execute an entity query that selects all post entities whose titles match the given pattern. When executing the previous entity query, Hibernate generates four SQL queries. The first query is for the post entity, while the next three are for the associated post details. So, the one-to-one -one association was fetched eagerly, even if it was annotated with fetch type lazy. The more post entities are selected, the more extra post details queries are going to be executed as well. This is called n plus one query problem, where n denotes the number of subsequent queries executed after the first query retrieved n results. Of course, you can fix the n plus one query issue with a join fetch jpql directive, but what if you didn't want to retrieve the post details entities? Selecting more data than necessary is always a source of data access performance issues. You can also fix the n plus one query issue using entity class bytecode enhancement. When using bytecode enhancement, the parent entity class bytecode will be instrumented so that the getter and setter methods are changed to provide field-based lazy loading capabilities. This way, Hibernate does not need to fetch the child one-to-one -one association to know whether to assign it to a null variable or to a proxy. Since the getter method call is intercepted, Hibernate can delay the initialization of the child side one-to-one -one association until the entity property is accessed for the very first time. Only if the underlying association has not been initialized, a secondary query will be issued and Hibernate will return either a null reference or the actual child entity object. Notice that for bytecode enhancement to work, you need to annotate the one-to-one -one association with lazy to one option no proxy. And in Hibernate 5, this feature does not work if you also use maps ID. Because it's much simpler and performs well even without bytecode enhancement, the unidirectional one-to-one -one relationship with maps ID is often preferred. The only advantage of the bidirectional one-to-one -one relationship is that you can navigate the child association from the parent entity. However, with maps ID, you can do that even with unidirectional one-to-one -one relationships, since both the parent and the child one-to-one -one entities share the same primary key. Testing time. To see how you can use bytecode enhancement to avoid the n plus one query problem affecting the parent side of a bidirectional one-to-one -one JP association, Go to my high performance Java Persistence GitHub repository and open the bidirectional one to one lazy no proxy test. Our test uses a post entity which has a bidirectional one to one JPA association with the post details entity. The post property of the post details entity represents the child side of this one to one JPA association, while the details property in the post entity represents the parent side. Notice that the fetch attribute of the one-to-one -one annotation is set to fetch type lazy. So the post details entity should not be fetched along with its parent post entity unless we explicitly instruct Hibernate to do so. Now, going back to our unit test, first we are going to create a post entity along with its associated post details. Because the persist operation is cascaded from the post entity to post details, we only need to persist the parent post entity. After the post and post details entities are persisted, the unit test will fetch the post entity with the title matching the one we have previously created. By the time the post is returned to the unit test, the persistence context which loaded the post entity is already closed. Therefore, we expect that when navigating the details property, a lazy initialization exception to be thrown, since the post details should be an uninitialized proxy. However, when running this unit test, we see that our assumption does not hold and the test fails. The test failure is triggered by the explicit fail method call, which we added after navigating the details property. This means our test didn't throw the lazy initialization exception as the details property was fetched eagerly and not lazily as we instructed Hibernate to do so when mapping the one-to-one -one JPA association.
Now, if we open the Maven PON XML configuration file, we can see that the Hibernate Enhanced Maven plugin is commented. If we uncomment it, we can notice that the Enable Lazy Initialization Configuration property is set to true. So, let's open the operating system command line and rebuild the test classes using the maven clean test compile command. If we inspect the command line output and search for the enhancing term, we can see that all the JPA entities residing in the Maven Java folder have been enhanced by the Hibernate Enhanced Maven plugin. If we go to the Maven target folder, open the post class and decompile it, we can see that the class bytecode has changed and the getDetails method call is now intercepted. The Hibernate readDetails method was injected by the Hibernate Enhanced Maven plugin and it allows us to avoid loading the post details entity until the details property is accessed for the very first time. The read object of the persistent attribute interceptor calls the intercept method, which loads the underlying entity attribute if it hasn't been loaded before. So, this is the mechanism used by the bytecode enhancement Hibernate plugin to ensure that entity attributes are loaded lazily. Now, we need to go to our test configuration and remove the build step so that the IDE will not override our test classes with their non-enhanced version. When rerunning the test, we can see that everything works fine now. The bytecode enhancement plugin allows us to fetch lazily the parent side of the one-to-one -one JPA association and the explicit fail method call is no longer reached this time.